Priest goes to church. Gut tells him to look behind altar. Father Paul McKenna, a dedicated and compassionate priest, arrived at St. Mary's Church early one Sunday morning, ready to prepare for the day's service. He cherished his role as a spiritual leader in the community, guiding his congregation with wisdom and kindness. Raised in a small town, Paul had always felt a calling to serve others, inspired by teachings of his faith and the selflessness of his parents. As he walked through the quiet sanctuary, the early morning light streamed through the stained glass windows, casting colorful patterns on the stone floor. Paul paused to admire the serene beauty of the church, a place of solace and refuge for so many. His heart swelled with a sense of purpose and gratitude for the opportunity to serve. Father Paul's routine on Sundays was well established. He would begin with a prayer, then move on to prepare the altar, ensuring everything was in its rightful place for the upcoming service. He took pride in the meticulous attention to detail that came with his duties, believing that every small act of preparation contributed to the sacredness of the Mass. As he made his way toward the altar, a sudden and inexplicable feeling washed over him. It was a gut feeling, an intuition that something was amiss. Paul had learned to trust these instincts, believing they were often gentle nudges from a higher power. He felt an urge to look behind the altar, a place he seldom had reason to inspect closely. Curiosity peaked, and with a slight sense of unease, Paul approached the marble altar. His heart quickened as he climbed the small steps, his eyes scanning the area for any signs of disturbance. He reached out and placed his hand on the cold, smooth surface of the altar, taking a deep breath to steady himself. As he leaned over to look behind the altar, his gaze fell upon a sight that made his heart drop. A figure, partially obscured by shadows, was crouched behind the marble stone. Paul's gasp echoed through the empty church, reverberating off the walls and filling the silence with a haunting resonance. Before he could react, he felt a hand on his shoulder. Startled, he turned to see Sister Margaret, the elderly nun who had served at St. Mary's for decades. Her face was etched with concern as she took in Paul's pale complexion. Father Paul, are you all right? she asked, her voice trembling slightly. Paul nodded, trying to gather his thoughts. Sister Margaret, I think there's someone behind the altar, he whispered, his voice barely audible. Without hesitation, Sister Margaret moved to join Paul, her years of experience lending her a calm demeanor, even in the face of unexpected situations. Together they peered behind the altar, their eyes adjusting to the dim light. The figure, now fully visible, was a young man in his early twenties. His clothes were tattered, and he looked disheveled, as though he'd been living on the streets. The young man's eyes were wide with fear, his hands trembling as he clutched a small, worn backpack to his chest. Please, don't be afraid, Paul said gently, taking a step closer. We're here to help you. The young man's eyes darted between Paul and Sister Margaret, uncertainty etched on his face. He seemed on the verge of bolting, but something in Paul's calm and reassuring presence made him hesitate. What's your name? Sister Margaret asked softly in her tone, soothing. David, the young man replied, his voice barely a whisper. David, it's okay. You're safe here, Paul assured him. Can you tell us what happened? Why are you hiding behind the altar? David took a deep breath, his eyes filling with tears. I had nowhere else to go, he confessed. I've been living on the streets for months. Last night I saw the church and thought maybe I could find some shelter here. I didn't mean to cause any trouble. Paul and Sister Margaret exchanged a look of deep compassion. You're not in trouble, David, Paul said softly. We're here to help you. Let's get you some food and a place to rest. You're safe now. Over the next few hours, Paul and Sister Margaret took care of David, providing him with food, clean clothes, and a place to rest. As David began to relax, he shared more about his story. He'd grown up in a nearby town but had fallen on hard times after losing his job and being unable to pay his rent. With nowhere else to turn, he had ended up on the streets, struggling to survive each day. Listening to David's story, Paul felt a deep sense of empathy and a renewed commitment to his mission of helping those in need. He knew that David's situation was not unique. There were many others in the community who were facing similar struggles. As the days passed, Paul and the church community rallied around David, 
offering support and resources to help him get back on his feet. David began attending the church's outreach programs, where he found a sense of belonging and hope for the future. One evening, as Paul was locking up the church, David approached him, looking more confident and at peace than when he had first met. Father Paul, I can't thank you enough for everything you've done for me, David said, his voice filled with gratitude. You and the church have given me a second chance. Paul smiled warmly. David, it's been our privilege to help you. Remember, you're part of our family now. We're always here for you. David nodded, his eyes shining with emotion. I want to give back, he said. I want to help others like you've helped me. Is there anything I can do to contribute to the church? Paul's heart swelled with pride. There's always work to be done, he replied. We could use your help with our outreach programs. Your experience and compassion will be invaluable to those who are still struggling. David agreed eagerly, and soon he became an integral part of the church's outreach efforts. He shared his story with others, offering hope and encouragement to those who were going through difficult times. His journey from despair to hope became an inspiration to many, a testament to the power of faith and community. As the months went by, the bond between Paul and David grew stronger. They worked side by side, helping those in need and spreading the message of compassion and love. David's presence in the church became a symbol of redemption and the transformative power of kindness. One Sunday morning, as Paul prepared for the day's service, he reflected on the incredible journey that had brought David into their lives. He felt a deep sense of gratitude for the gut feeling that had led him to look behind the altar that fateful day. It was a reminder that sometimes the smallest actions could have the most profound impact. As the congregation gathered for the service, Paul stood at the altar, his heart filled with joy and purpose. He looked out at the faces of his parishioners, each one a testament to the strength and resilience of the human spirit. With a voice full of conviction, Paul began the service, sharing the story of David's journey and the power of community. He spoke of the importance of reaching out to those in need, of offering a helping hand and a compassionate heart. As he spoke, David sat in the front row, his eyes shining with pride and gratitude. He knew that his life had been forever changed by the kindness of a stranger and the unwavering support of a community that had welcomed him with open arms. After the service, the congregation gathered in the church hall for fellowship and refreshments. David was surrounded by friends and supporters, each one eager to hear more about his journey and to offer their encouragement. Paul watched from a distance, his heart swelling with pride. He knew that David's story was just one of many, a reminder that every person who walked through the doors of St. Mary's had a unique journey and a story worth telling. As the sun set over the church, Paul felt a deep sense of peace. He knew that the work they were doing was making a difference, one life at a time. And he was grateful for the gut feeling that had led him to look behind the altar, setting in motion a series of events that would forever change the lives of those involved. In the days and weeks that followed, Paul continued to be inspired by David's dedication and resilience. Together, they worked to expand the church's outreach programs, providing food, shelter, and support to those in need. They also started a mentorship program, pairing experienced members of the congregation with those who were struggling, offering guidance and encouragement on their journey to stability and self-sufficiency. The impact of their efforts was felt throughout the community. Stories of transformation and hope began to emerge, each one a testament to the power of faith and the importance of compassion. Paul and David often spoke at community events, sharing their experiences and encouraging others to get involved in the work of helping those in need. As time went on, the church became a beacon of hope for many. People from all walks of life came through its doors, seeking solace, support, and a sense of belonging. The congregation grew, united by a shared commitment to making a positive difference in the lives of others. Paul's faith was strengthened by the countless stories of redemption and transformation he witnessed. He knew that the work they were doing was guided by a higher power, and he felt blessed to be part of it. One evening, as Paul and David sat together in the church office reviewing plans for an upcoming outreach event, David turned to Paul with a thoughtful expression. Father Paul, he said, 
I've been thinking a lot about my journey and the incredible support I've received from the church. I want to do more. I feel called to serve in a deeper way. Paul looked at David, sensing the sincerity and conviction in his words. What do you have in mind? He asked, curious about the direction David's thoughts were taking. David took a deep breath. I want to become a deacon, he said. I want to dedicate my life to serving others and helping those in need, just as you and the church have done for me. Paul's eyes filled with pride and emotion. David, that's a wonderful calling, he said. I believe you'd make an excellent deacon. Your journey and your heart for service are truly inspiring. With Paul's encouragement and the support of the congregation, David began the process of studying and training to become a deacon. It was a challenging journey, but one that he had approached with determination and faith. Throughout his training, he continued to serve the community, offering his time and compassion to those in need. When the day finally came for David to be ordained as a deacon, the church was filled with friends, family, and members of the congregation who had witnessed this incredible journey. The ceremony was a beautiful celebration of faith, resilience, and the power of community. As Paul laid his hands on David, blessing him in his new role, he felt a deep sense of fulfillment. He knew that David's journey had come full circle, and he was grateful to have played a part in it. David's ordination as a deacon marked the beginning of a new chapter in his life. He continued to serve the community with unwavering dedication, offering hope and support to those in need. His story became a source of inspiration for many, a testament to the power of faith and the importance of never giving up. Father Paul's heart swelled with pride as he watched David grow into his new role. He knew that the church was blessed to have such a dedicated and compassionate servant, and he felt grateful for the journey that had brought them together. As the years went by, the bond between Paul and David remained strong. Together, they continued to work tirelessly to make a positive difference in the lives of those they served. Their journey was a testament to the power of faith, the importance of community, and the incredible impact of following one's calling. And through it all, Paul never forgot the gut feeling that had led him to look behind the altar that fateful day. It was a reminder that sometimes the smallest actions could lead to the most profound and life-changing outcomes. And for that, he was forever grateful.